okay. We're back on shift inside the ambulance. It's on. It's on. Let's go! Ah. With more medical emergencies. Mate, ah. is that a little bit better now? And more cameras. Try to turn you on. Yes, turn me <laughs> on, girl, turn me on. We're taking you back to the heart of the action. It's a sharp scratch of cable. Ah. There are some new faces. This could potentially be quite hazardous. <laughs> and some old friends. Seriously? Oh, oh that's disgusting. <laughs> Body-mounted cameras record every moment. Nice and slow. To show you what goes on behind closed doors. Caroline, can you hear me, sweet? Okay, that is a chunk. You'll be on the front line with the ambulance crews from West Midlands Ambulance Service. I reckon you could do this job, you know. Take a big deep breath and hold it for me. Never a wasted moment when I'm being paid by the ambulance service. As they deal with 3,000 emergency calls each day. There's nothing to worry about. That's not too bad, Petal, is it? No. You were eager to come into the world, weren't you, Chicky? Step inside the ambulance. I love this job. Joe, you must have waxed yourself. I used to have my chest wax. Did you? Yeah, yeah. In them days, I had like a six pack and. Like, some, some like nice, you wasn't embarrassed about some that. Nice, yeah, some nice pecs. I wanted to show them off, so <laughs> naturally you get waxed, don't you? I've got these random patches that appear like just on my shoulders and on my top of my back. And I got my friend to just come and wax it. You've got to keep yourself tidy, haven't you? But you've never been waxed? No. Unless you count gaffer tape as wax. <laughs> Is it because you're scared? I'm natural, I'm all natural. Oh, oh God. Oh, nice one. Audi drivers. Not bad. I know two Audi drivers, and I reckon that they're terrible drivers. Oh, I'm not a bad driver. Well. 21 year old Leon Ascari is a student paramedic. Today, he's on shift with Preet Lally, who's been fully qualified for a year. Oh, good job. We have now got a 20-year-old with breathing problems in uh, Quinton. This is their third ever shift together, and they're en route to one of the one million calls made to West Midlands Ambulance Service every year. This is the one after your next left. At this stage, the crew don't know just how serious the patient's breathing difficulties are. Hello, is this Lauren? Hi. How can we help you today, dear? <gasps> She's breathing. Boyfriend Mohammed was with Lauren when the panic attacks started. Have you ever had this before? Yeah, she has. Okay. Panic okay, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> what I need you to do, sweet, is I need you to try and slow that breathing down straight away, okay? Leon tries to calm Lauren down. By breathing too fast, she's not holding on to the oxygen her body needs to function. What I want you to do, if you can, <laughs> breathe in through your nose and then try and hold it for a little while and then breathe out your mouth, okay? So it's. Leon needs to get Lauren to focus on slowing down her breathing to control her panic attack. So deep breath. Right. Take a deep breath in, hold it, and through your nose. I know it's difficult to start with. That's it, nice and deep in with your nose, all right? And then out with your mouth. Panic attacks are usually triggered by stress, anxiety, and phobias. It's all right if we take your jumper off. Is that all right? Go on then, darling. You need something feeling a bit hot. Come on. Even taking off her jumper is triggering Lauren to have another panic attack. Really In well. through your nose, Lauren. That's it. You're doing really well. Oh, you said that already. <laughs> OK. In through you're your doing nose it again. again. Right. You're doing it again. So breathe in, hold it, and out. Come on. Breathe in, hold it. Come on. 
lungs matter. <laughs> yeah, because you're breathing you too breathe? fast. Okay. The lack of oxygen flow in Lauren's body is causing the pins and needles. Okay. Slow the breathing down again, Lauren. You're doing really well. You almost got there before we took the jumper off. Come on. That's it. When you breathe in, I want you to try and hold it and then out through your mouth again, all right? That's it, and then out through your mouth. OK? It takes five minutes, but finally, Lauren's breathing begins to slow down. And you will start to get pins and needles and cramping in your hands and feet, OK? Although Lauren's breathing's getting better, she's now left with the painful after-effects of the panic attack. Do you feel a bit better now? Not yet. You're not going to yet. You will do. You will shake, it's you all right. Do. You will be you shaking. Will. Panic attacks cause numbness because if you start breathing very quickly, um, you are taking in a lot of oxygen, but you're not allowing the body enough time to expel out carbon dioxide. So when you get too much carbon dioxide, your blood starts to become a bit more acidic, but then your body also turns into anaerobic respiration, so production of that is an acid, which causes you to cramp, numb up, and it makes you feel like pins and needles. It's just a way of the body kind of telling you that there's something wrong, you need to slow down, we need to get back into a balance. In through your nose again. Out through your mouth. Chest pain? Back. In your back. Has the pins and needles started to go yet? The shaking stopped? That's a plus. It's now nine minutes since the crew arrived. With Lauren still not in full control of her breathing, Leon tries out a technique he's learned to regulate it by getting her to read him a passage from a book. All I want you to do is just tell me a story. Just read it out loud so I can hear you. All right. It's fine. Richly, diverse, I can't, I can't see. Oh. Um, fairy tales, well. each within its own magical character. Um, it will variously bring delight, laughter, and the thrill of mortal peril. Well, how's your breathing? It's better. When somebody's having a panic attack, the skill there is trying to get somebody to slow their breathing down at their own rate. There's a few methods I know, like breathing in through the mouth, out through the nose. There's another way that I like, which is last resort, but it's a distraction. So I just get the nearest thing to me that has quite a few words on it and just ask them to explain this movie to me or something. And then it's distracting them. They've got to talk this, so they've got to control the breathing so that they can talk, so that you can slow your breathing down and calm down nicely. So what brought this on today? That's what I was about to ask. I started crying. What for? I was getting really emotional. Are you um, stressed in any way? Long story short, um, I had it coinciding with an eating disorder from okay. when I was about 14 okay. until about 17. It just came back and I've never... And is that something you've spoken to your doctor about? I thought I could deal with it. There's always one, yeah, but it's always best to see what a professional thinks. You can always say, look, I'm getting this. I feel like I'm coping, just to let you know it's happening in case I need to come and see it again, cos I need help. It's always possible. With Lauren's breathing now back to normal, there's no need to go to hospital. Preet and Leon are rewarded for their help with a welcome cup of tea. How long have you been together? Last oh, Yeah, end of October. How long nice have you worked still. together? Nice and still. Three shifts. Can I married couple? Mm. Oh. Love you! <laughs> With Lauren now all smiles, the crew can head back to the ambulance for their next call. OK, nice to meet you. Take care now. Oh, right, OK. Panic attacks. You know, in terms of what it actually does to the body? It is it's, quite... it's a bit extreme. Them kind of calls aren't necessarily ambulance jobs. But if it wasn't for someone coming in to calm them down, it would turn into an ambulance job. Well, the thing is, yeah, because they'd pass out. It is what it is. It won't be the last. I 
went to this one guy and he, I just literally got my green shirt and they say N NHS on him, don't they? Bless him, he was lovely. And he says, NHS, he says, I know what that stands for. Nice hot stuff. <laughs> Genuinely, and that was it then. No National Health Service anymore. We are all just nice hot stuff. Those are keys. It's just gone 10 p.m. Technician Hannah Potter and paramedic Grant Porter are three and a half hours into their 12-hour shift. It's been a warm summer's day and it's still sticky at night. Sorry, is it OK if we pop to Hayden Cross to use the facilities because we um, haven't had a chance to yet, over? Four liner, Roger, that should be. I thought we might use the opportunity while we're here because we might not get another one. No. But before they can take their comfort break, an emergency comes in. 49. Yeah, it's received. We are mobile, thank you. The parents of a young child have dialed 999 because their son is having a seizure. You have reached your destination. Oh, there's someone there. Flagging. Fifty now, twenty-three month old Leo Reynolds. They are at the scene in just under five minutes. So, Leo, is it? Yeah. Leo, and what's happened? He's had a seizure. We had a number of time this morning. Okay. And we were in the hospital until about six. Yeah. It was a, it was temperature was at forty point six. Yeah. Just before what, he went. What was he wearing? Would you just like the he is best, now? No, just the vest top. Yeah, that's okay. all really thin. Little Leo has already spent more than six hours at hospital today. He's been diagnosed with tonsillitis, but his temperature is dangerously high. And just a few hours after getting home, he's had another fit. So how long did the fit last for? It was full on shaking for about 30 seconds, and yeah. then it kind of the shaking stopped, but he was still in his fit. Okay. Children just have fits when they get too hot. A fever convulsion is basically when a child gets too hot, they then start going limp and floppy, go sleeping, then they'll start to fit. It's just because they're not maintaining their own temperature, they're too young to control their own bodily temperature. Has he been coughing anything up? No. Yeah. Cool. Grant listens to Leo's chest. He's starting to struggle with his breathing. You can just do a 28% mask. So Grant decides he needs oxygen. Can I sit your vagina a bit more? The best position there, mate. Oh, I'm on this time. There we go. Pop this on your head, like you probably had earlier. Good boy. There we go. It can be a bit tickly. You'll be a bit tickly. But fitting an oxygen mask to a distressed two-year-old is never easy. I'll tell you what, shall I hold it like that? Let's do it like that. How about that? Happy, brilliant. It's like a dragon mask. <laughs> what was BM? 4.8. Okay. Temp was 41. So it was more with Leo calling him down. We, we sat him up so he was more in the airflow. You can take children outside, call them down like that, take off clothes, leave nappy on it, take off all the other clothes, cool drinks, cow pubbing's temperatures down, and most of those should work and stop a fit happening, hopefully. Is the front door shut or open? Yeah, get the air through. We just need to get rid of the heat in here, really. Just do this again, see if it's changed at all. Never sat you up a bit. There we go. It's 39, 80, it's coming down slowly. Leo's temperature might be coming down, but it's still dangerously high. He needs to go back to A and E. We met the ambulance blue. <gasps> wow. What's she done? That's cool. The blue lights are used to calm babies and young children inside the ambulance. Ew, I thought you'd be screaming in the face, don't <laughs> no. He's only blue, he's happy. Did you give him the Neurofen before the fit? Not this bad, or um, was it after? Like, literally minutes before. His yeah. temperature went up to 40.6. Yes, and then you go over. Oh. So just, just, just sod it, just give it to yeah. him now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm here, sweet. I know, I know. Yeah, have, do you want us a drink? Yeah, when it's getting, you know, 39, that's at the point where we need to go, 
outside or yeah. try and call him down, cold drinks, stuff like that. When he's getting mid-39s, it's the point we go stand outside and start going, oh, dear, this is going badly. With Leo safely strapped in... Are you ready, Han? Yeah, I'm ready. Okie dokie. They make their way to the hospital, where Leo will be given a full examination. Hannah monitors Leo throughout the journey and tries to reassure his worried mum, Raki. It's funny, isn't it? Some people are always prone to, like, tonsillitis. I've never had tonsillitis myself. But... Well, the thing is, my daughter was prone to tonsillitis. Mm. She had a very much when she was two. And that, uh, that was the first time I, I didn't know it was as common as mm. it is. No, yeah. And, um, I thought she was dying. Mm. I actually thought my daughter was going to die. It is, yeah. It, but it's more common ever... than you'd think. Yeah. <laughs> are you the troublemaker? You are the naughty one. <laughs> I'm right here, babe. I'm right here. I go nowhere. Leo's temperature has continued to drop during the journey to hospital. But doctors need to work out how to get it to a safe level and keep it there. Oh. We're here. Should we take this nasty thing off you? Should we take it off? Yeah. Wait, one more. He's ready. He's ready to go. There we go. Shall mommy pick you up? Come on then. Yay! Oh, there we So the mom was saying the daughter that was there. The one that was attacking um, she you. She had a fit when she was two years old. The mom hadn't heard of it before either, and um, she was surprised at how common this febrile convulsion oh, was. Um, it's such a it's common just, thing. It's very yeah, ill known, isn't it? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, People don't seem to explain to new parents, especially that. Kids get too hot, they, they fit, that's what they do. And yeah, they're too when, young when you to talk do it. about fitting, people always assume, oh, they're Epilepsy. epileptic, yeah. Slowly then, did you? Yeah, I had one of them Viagra pills and it got stuck in my throat. <laughs> the old one's always the best, aren't they? It's never an old one until you've heard it for the first time. <laughs> yeah. 9-7. Uh, it's just yeah, gone 6.30pm and Luca Barron and Hannah Meredith have recently left the house of a 73-year-old woman who'd become concerned about a chest complaint. Um, spoke to the husband, he's happy for the patient to stay at home, he's going to carry on monitoring her. Hannah, a paramedic for six years, made the call that the woman didn't need a trip to hospital. Technician Luca is learning on the job. Thank you. How do you get over that sort of fear, if you will? From my point of view, it's a fear of leaving someone at home? Um, it's just experience, I think, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, I got a job. We're going to um, a 44-year-old female who has high potassium. The level of potassium in your body is regulated by your kidneys. High potassium is usually a sign they're not working properly and can lead to tiredness, chest pains, and even heart failure. With no other details, Luca and Hannah arrive at the patient Jennifer's home in less than 10 minutes. They're let in by Jennifer's son, Daniel. Hi. Uh, she's just on the phone to, uh, so I think it's uh, one of the nurses from Canada. 
Hello. Uh, she just don't look you. I've got the sister on the phone, Frank Anik. She wants to speak to you. Okay. Yeah? Yep. Yeah, I'll call her. Hello. The nurse lets Luca know that Jennifer is having regular dialysis at Cannock Chase Hospital to treat a serious kidney problem. Following her latest session that morning, a routine blood test has shown up a worryingly high potassium level. Mm-hmm. Right. Jennifer's consultant isn't taking any chances and wants her brought into hospital for an urgent assessment. This has clearly unsettled Jennifer. OK. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. OK, Doc. The lady I spoke to, I don't remember her name because I'm not... Carla, sorry, yeah. Um, she said you get very anxious easily. Yeah. As I can see. Yeah. Don't try not to worry too much about anything, OK? A routine blood test from this morning has shown a worryingly high level of potassium in her blood. They need to get her back to hospital as soon as possible. Obviously, with the trouble that they've had today and obviously with the blood thing, it's just a precaution more, like, from the sounds of it, to be yeah, honest. Please. So. Try not to panic, all right? They know, from what Carla said, apparently they know you're coming yeah, at A&E. Right. &E. OK, and, uh, and I'm sure they'll get you sorted there. We'll take you on the short ride over. I'll keep you company, OK? Where is my phone? In there with your charger. I'm sure? Yeah. In there? Yeah. You got everything you need? Yeah. Let's get you on, OK? Yeah, I'll just in there. You got everything there? Yeah. Right. I'll speak to you tomorrow. All right. OK. Tomorrow. 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 I think it was a number of things with Jennifer being distressed going to hospital. Everything kind of was failing for her. She'd been in hospital that many times. She just didn't want to be in for anything else. And that couple, with the results she'd been found, had just raised her anxiety a little bit. High potassium means Jennifer's at an increased risk of heart failure, so Luca needs to calm her down to keep her heart rate low on the journey to hospital. OK, watch the step as you go down. Have a seat on here for me, sweet. There you go, sweet. You're a bit calmer now. Sorry? You're a bit calmer now. No, because I know what's going to happen. With any patient that's distressed, I think that the main thing is to try and take the mind off it a little bit, uh, distract them. Um, I mean, that's what I try and do anyway. Um, so I think that was the case with Jennifer, just to try and distract her with what was going on and just take her mind off, off that situation. Is that your son in there? Yeah. What worries about you? Sorry? He worries about you. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> it's my first time, this is Newcross. First time to Newcross? No, it's my first home. Oh, first home, yeah. sorry. It's <laughs> okay. Accents, accents. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you live? I live over in Shrewsbury now, but I come from, um, a, I say a little town. I come from a town called Preston oh, yeah. in Lancashire. Um, sort of working my way down the country. Um, so I've sort of stayed in Shropshire, that's where me and my girlfriend live. Uh, we live in Shrewsbury. She works sort of South Church, Stratton, I don't know if you know it. Nah. I mean, I obviously come over this way for work. She's Not children? Sure. Not yet. We are getting married. Congratulations. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. Mm -hmm. We are getting married, hopefully next year, and then hopefully children will follow up after. Because I definitely want kids. Uh-huh. Um, Emily? <laughs> um, I'd be happy with two. And for some reason, she wants three. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. How old is um, your lad? 20... He'll be 26 in October. Oh, really? Halloween. Oh, God. A few moments later, and the hospital comes into view. I hope I've uh, relaxed you a little bit. Yeah, you've uh, Brilliant. Even though I know what's going to happen. I know, but, you know, in the sort of five minutes I've... Uh, I've had you. At least I've distracted you a little bit. Yeah. 
Jennifer is taken off to A&E, where the nurses will treat her to get rid of the excess potassium and make sure her heart is stable. Yeah. Oh, she was on the bed. She was on the bed. What, yeah. a, good, what a good place to have a fainting it's episode like in the like, bed department. Yeah. She's like, alas. <laughs> it's like a damsel out of a 1920s movie. Alas, I feel faint. Yes. It's a good job that there's a £3,000 memory for a mattress here. <laughs> and plenty of cushions to raise my blood pressure. It's midnight Sunday evening. Grant Porter and Hannah Potter are about to go on a break. Going to Dudley Hub. Via McDonald's. McDonald's. <laughs> the opposite direction, but never mind. Oh, God, here we go. 4-9. Three-year-old male there being assaulted. He's over the head with a box off. Our son's phone police are not questioning for the tent. Yeah, that's all we see. So let's have a look. Well, I was quite looking forward to my McDonald's. It's the same with this job, isn't it? Every time you go for food, you, when you go, oh, I'm ready for a break, this. something yeah. silly happened. Just nine minutes after speaking to Control, Grant and Hannah arrive on scene. That's her, that's him. i oh, bring him over. Arrived in room, activated. See what he's actually done. <laughs> Local resident Anne has been looking after Ricky. You know, chap? This lady is golden. Do you want to walk with us then and have a look at the back of the ambulance at you? Because yeah. it's, right, it's light in there. Yourself. Thank you, thank you so much. You're welcome. Before the attack happened, 23 year old Ricky had been drinking in his local pub. Go on, jump on that chair for us, mate. I might have to put my jacket on. What's happened tonight then? I didn't go to hospital while I'm working. I really even looked at you. Tell us what's going on. Worried he could be suffering from concussion, Grant wants to know exactly what happened. Bumped into a couple of lads who had an argument with him before. Mm -hmm. Just said, go off, basically. I'll go down. So I've done walking. And I've been hit on the head. Simple. What have you been hit with? I believe a bottle. I'll tell you now, my head is killing me. The blood was from a head injury. Head injuries tend to bleed quite badly, and it's normally what you see. And you see lots of blood covering the head, you see quite a lot of blood on clothes, and it's normally the smallest of cuts. Pass me your finger, if you can. Yeah. They just hit you once. So how long ago do you reckon it's been since this happened? Because it's all dried up. Oh, at least it's now. OK, OK. Really, really dizzy, man. Yeah. How much do you want to drink? Not too much. Not not one normal amount. What's too much? What's your normal amount? About five, six pints of wine. Pints of what? Um, just like that. Just like that. Do you mind doing that? Vodka. And some vodka. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> it's a pretty good game. I've got these on my legs. Oh, I hate you now. Sorry. It's just happened about an hour ago. It's a free wax at the end of the day. No, it's not. <laughs> Did it break the bottle? Oh, yeah. Have you any paracetamol tonight? That lady gave me some, yeah. Give me some more for another time. I don't think you quite need more of these. Probably not the best for me to drink either to it. No. <laughs> Grant <laughs> needs to check the severity of Ricky's wounds, as glass shards could be embedded in his skin. Scrub it, man. I don't care if it hurts. I don't know where the cups are, so I don't want to scrub it too hard. Just you got any pain anywhere else other than your head? No, no, no. Just. You've got nothing down your neck. I've got work at five. Five in the morning? Ah, you've got till five then, we're all right. Where'd you work? I'm a drainage engineer. But Ricky is still in a lot of pain from the attack. Mm. Get your head still. 
Yeah, so the dungeon you're in your glass in there, I can I see. I could feel it whenever you wipe but I could feel it. It's like shards. Where you're saying the shards, I don't think the cut's big enough to have anything in it. It is just it's a just little... sharp, like... It's one of those, you know when you cut your finger and it's a really nasty little cut like and it just really... Cut. Yeah, it looks exactly like that. Scrub it, man. <laughs> Where's all the blood come from then? You've got a your little, head. you've got a cut here, which looks like that's where it's bled. But your head bleeds really well anyway. Yeah. Heads bleed really. Your head really has well. a lot of lot blood vessels around it, so if you have a tiny oh, little cut, it? <laughs> it bleeds so much more than like your finger would. I'm just glad I've got nothing on my new shoes. You've got stuff. <laughs> you've got blood on your jeans. Nothing on my new shoes. Your shoes are still the looking shoes fresh. Are, the shoes <laughs> are safe. <laughs> shoes are spotless. Oh. Hello. The attack on Ricky has been referred to the police. PC Warren and PC Billen have to file a report on the incident. You all right, mate? What's happened? Not much, really. Not much? Just an argument. You had a fight? Not a fight, because I don't retaliate. Um, I was for a bigger person. Very good. <laughs> you normally nick at me. <laughs> Oh, now I thought I knew you. Oh, you're naughty. No, I'm not. No, we ain't too bad. Have been. Yeah. Grown up. Despite his injuries, Ricky decides he doesn't want to press charges. We've got to record that you've been assaulted. Be careful, will you? It'll be sorted tonight, I promise you. Be no! Be careful. Yeah, if you need us, give us oh, a yeah, ring. We'll but I'd advise you not to sort anything out yourself, all right? Because that's our job. Don't do you, it. But... You was a good lad last time. Be good again. Oh, Always fine. good. I oh, know. All right, then. Thank you all so right. much. No worries. No, Cheers, folks. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Care, See you soon. Look after yourself. With the police having logged the incident, and the ambulance crew happy that their patient doesn't have a severe head injury, it's up to Ricky if he wants to go to hospital for further checks. Yeah, we can take Josh to get these cleaned and you watch a few hours, or you can go home tomorrow and make your call. I think I'd go home, jump in the shower, have a good scrub. Yeah. Get some sleep. When you're doing your head, just do water if I was you. And be really careful, because if you have got stuff in there we can't see or that, you don't want to dig it in and make it worse. So you don't want to come with us then? No, and I am sorry for wasting time. No worries, that's right. Wasting our time. Right, if you don't need to trust me, you just need to sign there to say what we said. You can take them to get you fully checked over, but you're going to go home instead. Um, if you have any concerns, you know to call us back. Yeah. Take it easy, take it easy at work tomorrow. How far from here is home? Up that hill there. Right, it seems to close. We may as well just pop you in there to save you walking back up there in this state. Sure. Yeah, because I don't want you falling over. 45 minutes after receiving the call... Can you just pop your seatbelt on? I've seen Hannah's driving. Excuse me, I've heard that. <laughs> Ricky is ready to go home. Right, come on then. Let's get you going. Are you feeling all right now? Just walk, man. OK. Come bit, on then. Bit dizzy, but as long as my shoes are all right, I'm sad. OK, just because your shoes all right. I'm loving your priorities. Thank you. It's nearly 2.30 on a busy afternoon in Walsall. OK. I hope you've been good, then. Yeah. OK. Paramedic to... Tina Spittle and technician Donna Parcell are more than six hours into a 12-hour shift. OK, I'll see you later. Bye. Tina's four-year-old daughter has called to tell her about the exotic animals she's been shown at school. Yeah, the animal mum's been in, so she's held a snake in a tarantula today. Snake around her neck. I can imagine this big snake, this <coughs> massive snake, just like... <laughs> she's a lot braver than I've been. <laughs> oh, yes. My daughter is not afraid of anything. But their moment of respite is soon interrupted. Well done. Nine seven. Sure, I can go that nine way. Nine seven. Oh. We've got you on today. One five two nine. Now, please. All received on mobile. Thank you, Abba. Eighty-one year old male, um, breathing problem and not eating. That's as much as we've got. The wife of an 81-year-old man has dialed 999 because she's worried about his failing health. Just 
here. Patricia is waiting for them. Hello, darling. Thank you. Oh, no, not at all. Where about are we going? Donna finds John looking frail and disorientated. How are you feeling, darling? I'm very really <laughs> OK. John has a chest infection and had to call a doctor out to the house only the night before. He came here last night. Mm-hmm. And he examined okay. me. OK, yeah. And he said, Tuesday. you're doing good, house apart from falling to bits. Anyway. Oh, OK. <laughs> The doctor suggested John went to hospital last night, but he refused to go. I'm trying to go there because I fell over. Oh, bless him. Keep falling, falling over. Okay, he keeps falling. Yep. John's daughter Teresa is also very concerned. Because he's not eating. Yeah, there isn't. There isn't anything of him, is there? Okay. You not got much of an appetite. Well, I can't eat. Um, no, I'm bloated up. You can't eat, okay? I was going to say, if you're not eating, you'll be quite a, quite a weak person. That's right. As we arrived, it was quite clear that he was a very unwell man. So he was quite thin. He looked very frail. He also had got a very rattly chest that we could hear without having to to listen to it. But in his case, because he got a number of problems. They needed further investigation. And I'm talking to people who are here. You're talking to people who aren't here? Yeah. OK. And somebody's come to see me today. 376. Okay. And I thought he was the bloke shouting through the window. So you, are, you, are you saying you're hallucinating? Yeah. OK. His, his mother said it was Billy. Even though John doesn't want to go to hospital, his symptoms are ringing too many alarm bells for the crew. They need to get him checked at A&E. Come and have a seat on this bed. There we go. OK. John, I'm going to bring your legs up. Whoop, there we go. Now, this is so you don't run away, OK? Have you put your seatbelt on for yes, us? Will, yes. You haven't seen her driving yet. It's, it's the best. Oh, the best. <laughs> But simply moving John from the house to the ambulance has made him short of breath again. How's your breathing? Well, you can hear it, I can definitely hear it. Oh, yeah, 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 you don't sound the best, does it? There we go, sweet. With everyone safely strapped in, Tina wants to try and get to the bottom of what's really going on with John. And John, when you when you wanted us, when you asked for the ambulance, was it your breathing that was the problem? Or was it anything else? Were you feeling unwell in any other way? I keep falling over. It's the falling over yeah. that's concerning you. Are you happy? Okay. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Talking to people who aren't there. Yeah. All the while there. And how do you know they're not there? Do they disappear? Okay. And how long has that been happening? Just today? I just say two, two weeks, three weeks. Two or three weeks? Yeah. OK. I don't call them for nothing. No, that's OK. No, it's no, just no. so that we understand why. That's yeah. that's all. OK. Yeah. When did he start his antibiotics? Um. Now, let me think now. God, is this, is, this is the last week, two weeks, so it'll be two weeks. OK. There's a chance John's tablets could be giving him side effects, like hallucinations and dizziness. But Tina's worried there could be a bigger problem. Dementia or Alzheimer's? Well, Are they oh, suspected dementia? So we haven't did that three months since. Yeah, all of a sudden. Yeah. Okay. There were a couple of signs with John that he might have had the start of, of dementia as a you know, a granddaughter to my, my own grandfather, he had dementia that developed over time. And I could see similarities between the two. Um, and it, that was concerning. My, my grandma got quite severe dementia before he passed away, sadly. Um, and then he ended up in a home. And it, and it, uh, it does upset you sometimes. You all right, 
taken down that ramp yet? Oh. Right then, my sweet. Let's get you in. Get you out of the cold. Shut these doors and I'll turn. Lauren has suffered from panic attacks for the last eight months. The day after the paramedics treated her at home, she went to see her GP. She was given some medication, which has helped. Thankfully, her panic attacks are happening less frequently, and Lauren says she's grateful she has a kind and patient boyfriend who's always willing to help her. Little Leo was kept under observation at hospital for a few hours before being sent home. After the convulsion, he was left feeling drained and unable to sleep properly for a couple of days. Leo's now feeling much better and hasn't had any fits since. Jennifer had to stay in hospital overnight. She was put on dialysis, which filtered her blood and removed the excess potassium. As Jennifer is suffering from kidney failure, she's considering a kidney transplant, but she's worried about having the procedure. 23-year-old Ricky was fine after being treated by the paramedics. He didn't suffer from concussion after the bottle attack and even managed to make it to work later that morning. He hasn't seen the people who attacked him since and has decided not to pursue the matter any further. On arrival at hospital, doctors diagnose John with bronchitis and dementia. Sadly, his condition deteriorated and he passed away in hospital just five days later. John was a grafter and had worked hard all his life. He'll be sorely missed by his friends and family.